I had found a great deal, but I had no way to pay for it. And my coach at the time told me that if you find a good enough deal, you'll be able to find the money. So I was about to put that theory to the test. Welcome to the Mastering Real Estate Podcast. This podcast is for real estate investors and professionals looking to take their real estate game to the next level. On Tuesdays, I analyze the industry's leading real estate books and break down the main lessons that you can apply to your life and business. Then on Thursdays, I review the lessons I have learned from flipping over 100 houses and being a full-time real estate investor since 2018. Stay tuned each week so that we can all become masters of real estate together. Welcome back to the podcast. A lot of people in this industry only talk about their successes and wins, and they want you to think that real estate investing is so easy. Well, the reality is that real estate investing is just like every other industry. Success does not come easy, and the best lessons are learned through failure. So I'm gonna put some realness back into real estate and talk about some of my biggest failures and lessons learned so that hopefully you can learn something and avoid the mistakes that I've made along the way as a full-time real estate investor for the the past six plus years. And today we're talking about project number three. Before we get into it, I'm your host, Maura McGraw. I've been a full-time real estate investor since 2018. I've managed over 100 flips. I have founded and grown a real estate investment firm and property management company, and I live and work in the industry every day. We have two show formats on this podcast. On Tuesdays, I analyze the industry's leading real estate books, pick out the key points, and help you apply key concepts to your life and business. And on Thursdays, I share some of my most important lessons learned from flipping 100 houses and being a full-time real estate investor. Okay, let's get into it. My third project was a light cosmetic flip at 3613 Oakwood Drive in Adamsville, Alabama, which is a rural suburb outside of Birmingham. We found this property through a local wholesaler and the seller really needed cash quickly, so we were able to get this property for a steal. Additionally, the property only needed some minor cosmetic work, so we knew that we could conduct the rehab in about two weeks. There was only one big problem. We didn't have the money to buy it. Before I get into how we solved this problem and some of the major lessons learned, I want to review some of the basic property details of this project. This was a light cosmetic flip in Adamsville, Alabama. A local wholesaler found the deal and brought it to me, and we were able to purchase the house for $55,000 in 2018. We were able to conduct the renovations for about $6,600, and we were able to sell the completed flip for $106,000 to a buy and hold to another buy and hold investor making about a $40,000 profit on the project. Okay, back to the story. I found this deal shortly after my first flip. I was in the same predicament as I was on that last project. I was counting on using a hard money lender to fund the deal. The hard money lender that I had been working with turned out to be a scammer. So I had to find private funding for this deal with very little time, less than a week before closing. And if you listen to episode four, you kind of know the story. After a few failed attempts to raise private money, my general contractor, Chris, introduced me to Aziz Shinara, who would later go on to become my business partner. So right after successfully pitching him on our first flip, and if you want to hear more about that, go back and listen to episode four. I pitched him on funding this deal as well. And while the last flip was an overall success, this one was even better. It was cheaper, quicker, and had almost double the profit margin. I was able to present all of the relevant information to Aziz in a spreadsheet pro forma, and he saw it as a deal that he could not pass up. At the time, I had a coach and mentor who told me that if I found a good enough deal, the money would come. This was really a good test of that theory because I had already asked Aziz for money for my first flip project, so I was pretty hesitant to do it again even before finishing the last project. However, I knew that this was a great deal, so I just had to go for it. The numbers were simple, and Aziz trusted Chris to be able to complete the construction as promised, so 
miraculously, he agreed to fund this deal as well. And I remember feeling a little stupid at the time looking for deals when I didn't have the money to pay for them. But I just followed my coach's advice and kept searching and trusted that the money would follow if the deal was good enough. And sure enough, my coach was right. This deal gave me more valuable practice at analyzing deals and pitching to private investors. So I'm very grateful for this opportunity. Another reason that this deal was a success and that I was able to raise private money for the project is because it provided multiple exit strategies. My primary strategy was to flip the house, but I also ran the numbers and knew that it would be a solid rental property with a rent potential of $1,000 per month. If for some reason things went totally sideways, I knew that I could always rent the property out. So although I had a good plan to flip the house, having a solid backup plan gave everyone the confidence to move forward with the project. I would highly recommend purchasing properties with multiple exit strategies, and this is still a key tenant of my business model today. I much prefer to flip properties that would also be solid rentals just in case something unforeseen happens or the market changes. It's always a good idea to have multiple exit strategies for your properties. Looking back on this project, there are three main takeaways that can apply to almost all real estate investors. Number one, if you find a good enough deal, you'll be able to find the money to fund it. So here I'm gonna parrot what my old coach used to tell me in which I didn't really believe until I found it to be true myself, that if you find a good enough deal and you are persistent, you'll find the money to fund it. Second, key takeaway is to have multiple exit strategies. Try to purchase properties that can be both flipped, rented, and or wholesaled. And number three is that light cosmetic flips like this are a great way to get started as a flipper. This was a relatively easy project and would have been the perfect first project. So I would recommend that if you are interested in flipping and kind of want to dip your toes in the water, if you find a deal like this, go for it. This would be a great beginner project for a new flipper. Thank you so much to our show sponsor, Doradus Academy, which makes this podcast possible. We have many awesome resources at Doradus Academy, including a whole page of free resources for real estate investors. And we also have an awesome course about how to get started in real estate investing, where we walk you through picking your investment strategy, identifying your target market, setting up your business structure, lining up your financing, important tax considerations, and how to offset your risk with insurance. Pretty much all the stuff you need to know to get your business going the right way. So if you are interested, make sure to check those things out at DoradusAcademy.com. Thank you so much for listening. I hope this show helped you a lot, that you got a lot of value out of it. And make sure to tune in next week to hear about our third flip, where we finally get some bank financing. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure that you're subscribed to the podcast and leave us a rating and review. We are a new and growing podcast, so every rating, review, and share helps immensely. Also, make sure that you're following us on social media, where you'll see a lot more behind-the-scenes content on a daily basis. See you every Tuesday and Thursday.